question from Andrew is how does a horse bend or turn on a circle? And um, also Ali Amin has a question, how do I start the horse in dressage? And that are completely different questions, but they have a lot of this, the, the, the core in common. Because uh, how do I start a horse in dressage? You need him to turn. That he, not, he will not fall to the left or to the right or out or in. So that is how to start a horse in dressage. And the first steps, step to, to do that is, well, we do that, that in hand, that we ask the horse to, to turn. And um, let's have a look how a horse uh, bend on a circle. Here we have a left bended horse and the green arrows show that the horse has to learn to contract the muscles on that side and the right arrows, arrows are showing that he has to stretch the contracted muscles on the left side. So it, the natural symmetry is really a muscle problem. So he has to stretch the, the short muscles and he has to uh, contract uh, the longer muscles. And when he does that, then the inside hip will come forward and the, the point of mass will stay in the middle or the center of gravity and the inside hind leg will step to the red spot. And because the inside hind leg then uh, will uh, help the body in uh, support, then the horse, and the horse, uh, and because the inside hind leg supports the body and the horse stretches his uh, outside muscles, his back muscles, as a, as a result the, the back will come up and he will lower his head. And this is three elements you will have in this. That is lateral bending, the forward down and the stepping under. So the lateral bending is that a horse bends, uh, a left bended horse is able to to, to bend to the right. The forward down is because of the stretching to the left and to the right, the back muscles uh, stretches, so the head will come forward down and the back will come up. And then the, because of a good uh, lateral bend, the inside hip comes forward and the inside hind leg will step under the center of gravity. This is really a kind of straightness training triad that you will see from the circle to the piaf and you will have a good LFS you need it in the shoulder in, in the quarter in, in the pirouette in a left banded piaf, in a right banded levar you need LFS all the time um, to uh, support, to teach the horse to support the body with hind legs because an, a crooked horse will place uh, a right bended crooked horse will place the inside hind leg next to the body and left bended horse a lot of horses place the, 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 the hind leg also next to the body and then the horse only can push with it or um, yeah push against the point of mass with two legs that also happens a lot <laughs> And then he pushes the weight towards the front legs. And there's one front leg uh, more coordinated than the other. So one front leg really um, has to deal with most of the weight. If a horse is 500 uh, or 1000 pounds, then uh, normally it's 500 in the front legs and 500 pounds in the hind legs. But a lot of horses uh, have um, uh, 600 on the front legs and 400 on the hind legs and from the 600 on the front legs for example 400 is on one front leg and only 200 on the other front leg and there the problems uh, arise so that's not what we want we really want to um, uh, yeah to to, uh, to 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 make the horse in balance so uh, even coordination in the front legs the same pushing, carrying in the hind legs and the 
center of gravity in the middle and not on the one of, of the front legs and when the horse gets stronger and stronger we even want to have the center of gravity more to the hind legs that he uh, will carry most of the weight with the hindquarters. We have uh, three components uh, in the straightness training to accomplish symmetry in body and limbs and that is the launching part, the work in hand and the riding and these are the three components we use in straightness training. The launching part and the work in hand part um, and the riding part all have those uh, the LFS within and we uh, it's straight the string is a, a little bit strange because we we're talking about straight but it has a lot to do with bending bending in the body and bending in the hind legs and the end result if the horse if we had have, have done the stretching exercises and the, the fitness exercises in the hind legs um, after a year some years years <laughs> not one year and all, all, also not oh let's do uh, the straightness training for four weeks and then my horse is straight no it takes some years because if you want to do the split for example oh, we have a webinar about doing the split with your legs like this I don't think you will accomplish that in two hours perhaps you did it as a child so now you can do it but I can't and it takes me really half a year at least um, and perhaps it takes me eight years and perhaps I, I will never manage because the older you are the stiffer you are and the less um, supple your muscles will be so and we do horse riding so we contract our split muscles so for us it's very difficult so there, therefore uh, as a child you also need to know what is your goal do you want to go on ballet or do you want to go horse riding because you cannot cannot uh, do the same because it's the opposite muscles you want to stretch and you want to use but that's another story but that is a little bit that you know you have to know what you want um, <clears throat> so launching work in hand and the riding that are the three components of straightness training the first uh, exercise we start uh, lots of horses on, in the launching part because they have back muscle problems or kissing spines or they are very much on the front leg so it's not a good idea to put a rider on, weight, or, weight on uh, a rider on top that weighs uh, 120 pounds because uh, it's better to, uh, to straighten the horse and to build his muscles that he, and that he uh, uh, loosen his back and he uses his hindquarters that's a good idea to start uh, without a rider and uh, the circle is really the first exercise to start with so that's the question uh, from Ali Amin how to start the horse in dressage well let's start on the circle and I will tell you that the circle is the most difficult exercise for the horse we think it's Piaf and Levat and the Capriol and things like that but you can do see falls you can see falls doing flying changes and they, they, they impress each other and the stallions impress uh, the mares and, and other stallions etc and they, they, they use all those high school movements uh, very easy but you never see uh, falls half an hour doing or wh whatever kind of horse do circles and if you see some horse doing circles he's not really there's something not good in the head I think um, but the circle is Pluvinel, he was uh, from the Renaissance time, he was really a, a grandmaster uh, from the, the French kings and he says in his book the circle is the most difficult exercise and, uh, and we know now why because you can see horses don't turn from themselves they fall to the inside or they fall out um, because of the diagonal weight shift and the handedness in the front legs so the to turn on the circle is, is really difficult and that's the first step we need the, the, the horse to, to, uh, to teach. So let's have a look. 
Here you see uh, Prince Ermelo, my horse, on the launch, on the left, that, that I can teach him um, to bend to the left and to the right equally, that he uh, keeps his point of mass, his center of gravity, the red spot in the middle, and that he will find the inside, with his inside hind leg, this uh, center of gravity, because we first teach him that this without a, a rider on top, and then we teach him the same thing with a rider on top. That he really uh, finds the balance uh, with his hind legs. That is a, a really um, important thing. We have seen that when stretching the outside muscles, contracting the inside muscles, the inside hip comes forward, and because the inside hip comes forward, the horse will start like a mannequin is doing. She's putting the leg in front of her and not uh, push it. She doesn't push it away from her. Uh, like you see a lot of Western people walking, like they are um, pushing a shopping cart. They are, they are, they, they are moving vertically and then rushing uh, very much through the streets <laughs> and they, they fall all the time. And you see a mannequin is placing her foot and then put weight on it. Like also uh, the Ch Chinese will do in Aikido and things like that. Um, uh, that is, uh, and a cat moves also like that. First the foot on the ground and then weight on it. And a lot of people just throw their weight and then move their feet under it. And that's exactly what, what a horse can do, but that destroys the front legs. So we really have to put the inside hind leg under the point of mass. And that is what a circle will teach a horse. Um, and, and, and for example, Patty says, uh, my horse is falling on the shoulder all the time and straight lines are nearly impossible because um, if she would like to do a, a straight line then the horse is falling inwards uh, on that shoulders. So yeah, she, call, she calls it a kind of miscommunication, but it's really an, a muscle problem um, that you have to start on the circle first, stretch the short muscles, contract the longer muscles, have a look that the inside hip is coming forward, that the inside hind leg will step under the point of mass, and then uh, you can ask the hind legs to support the body and that he turns instead of uh, that he will fall on the inside or the outside shoulder. And um, Janine also has a question. She said when uh, my horse gets excited or scared or goes uh, or scared up, uh, that no, when he gets excited or scared, up goes his head and down goes his back. And that also uh, there you can see that uh, the natural symmetry has, um, can occur that the horse will shorten the back muscles, but also the mind can uh, make, can, can um, improve the natural symmetry, and that's what we don't want. So, um, uh, the, the circle will stretch the muscles from the back and then he will lower his head. So a lot of spooky horses also start to relax because we bring, because of the um, LFS, the F stands for forward down, we bring the horse in a kind of grazing posture, uh, like, like he's eating grass, then he also lowers his head. So the straightness training can help balancing the mind of the horse because falling on the shoulder is also an out of balance kind of moving. And when, when, he, when a horse can turn and f can find balance on the hind leg, then, and when he relaxes his back muscles, then he, he do, we don't trigger his alert kind of state. Because a hollow back and a high head and neck, then that is the alert kind of state of the horse. So we can really uh, change, by changing the body posture, we can have a state change 
in the horse. And that is interesting. So, um, uh, Janine, by doing the LFS, you um, are able to lower the head and neck and help not only um, having your horse using his abdominal muscles much better, but also that he gets more in a relaxed state. The circle is the first uh, exercise to teach a horse and the, the second exercise, that is a, a really a straight and straining exercise, that is the shoulder in. Then we bring the point of mass in, in front of the inside hind leg so that the inside hind leg will find this point of mass. And that is um, important, the shoulder in, to teach a horse to bend the inside hind leg. Look, we cannot give a horse dumbbells in his hind legs <laughs> to, to uh, build up some muscles. The only thing we can do if, if this is a hind leg, if, if I put my weight on it, then the, this angle gets uh, smaller. And then I can do, uh, I put weight on it and I don't. And I put weight on it and I don't. So if I do a whole long side shoulder in, then it's a kind of inside hind leg, take weight, don't take weight, take weight, don't take weight, take weight. So it is a kind that you, you do 10 times this, if, if you have 10 times the inside hind leg stepping under the point of mass, then you say, hello, inside hind leg, <laughs> wake up, you have to work build up your muscles. So shouldering is really a fitness exercise. It's a fitness tool for the horse and it has nothing to do with uh, oh it's just a fancy exercise we do in the dressage competition. Why we do it? We don't know. It's in the book so we do. <laughs> but you really have to know why do we do shouldering and especially the horses uh, for example the right banded horses who are very much falling on the left shoulder, then the shoulder into the right will um, uh, replace the, the, the weight from the left front leg to the right hind leg. And then that shoulder can get more free. And then you can cure the horse from uh, the left-handedness. So a left, a horse that is very much falling on the right, on the left shoulder, you do uh, shoulder into the right and a horse that is very much falling on the right shoulder, you do shoulder into the left. And not only that, you also address the hind legs to step under the point of mass and, and, and keeping the point of mass in the middle. That is really the straightness training. When we have taught the shoulder in, the next exercise is the uh, quarter in or the haunches in or travers and uh, that's the same for the, uh, the word for the same uh, exercise and Bettina she says how do you teach a horse to do travers from the ground and from the saddle and the quarter in is just a fitness exercise to have the outside hind leg stepping under the point of mass and as you can see, he steps under the rider. So that is a, a big advantage also from, from haunches in and also shoulder in. The inside hind leg has to step under the rider. And we first teach a horse that from the ground in hand. And then we teach a horse the same thing with me on the ground teaching the horse to quarter in as ever and just having weight on his back. And then when he's comfortable with the weight, then the rider can take some aids. Um, well, he, he, the horse has to, uh, you have to teach the horse that the aids from the ground means the same as the aids from above. So that takes a while. You, you really have to spend some days or weeks or sometimes months <laughs> uh, to teach the horse, okay, um, normally the, the aids co come from the ground and now they come from above. And then what you do is the rider give the new aids and then you give the old aids from the ground and then the horse at some 
level he will make the relation between the two people that what the rider is doing that it means the same as the longeur is doing and then he will understand that then you can back off as a as the helper from the ground and that can take some days or weeks uh, just take take your time and on the left picture down you see me pointing at the the neck vertebra and to teach a horse to to come in with the hindquarters you can you can press uh, with feeling of course on the vertebra and then you will have a kind of uh, hollowness on the inside and then the inside hip will come forward and the hindquarters will come in and that is a little bit the, ma the, the magic quarter in button we call it sometimes and that is how you can teach a horse the quarters in. Well if a horse can do this two exercises then you can fitness the inside hind leg and then you can fitness the outside hind leg and say hello come on build some muscles make your hind legs more bendable and if you have if you know from your horse that what is the more pushing hind leg that hind leg is more stiff <laughs> so then you put that hind leg on the inside to supple that hind leg and then it's a good idea to have some training strategy. That is also what Teresa was asking. What is the training strategy if my horse is asymmetrical? Well, then you have to uh, find out, okay, what is the difficult part? So the difficult part, you do some more extra because the stiff hind leg, you, you really want to, to, to bend it a little bit more because the other hind leg is so much more, so much more easy to bend. So then you do the stiff hind leg first, then the less stiff hind leg, and then the stiff hind leg again. Um, but in the beginning, you will not focus on the hind legs when you are just doing the circles. Then you, you are uh, bu uh, busy with the, the lateral bending, because in the beginning the lateral bend is uneven. And the, the lateral bend first, so a left bended horse, you start on the right, then to the left, and then to the right one more time. And, uh, but the bending in the body is quite, um, it's, it's much easier to, to make that more equal than the hind legs. So uh, sometimes it looks a little bit like that he changes the bend. Because in the beginning it was much more easy to the left and then he's much more easy to the right. And then you think, huh, <laughs> why is he changing the bend? And that could be uh, because then you... Um, come a little bit further that you really address the hind legs and that you notice that the, the stiff hind leg on the inside is much more difficult than, than the, the more bendable hind leg. And when you notice that your horse changed the bend, then you are getting somewhere. So that is a good sign because then, then he gets quite even in the body and then hmm, the hind legs and that's a job. To, to straighten the hind legs. So what comes next? That is the so-called ramfer. And this is the structure we, we teach a horse in, um, in the straightness training. Because we want to teach the horse to bend in his body, to bend the inside hind leg, to bend the outside hind leg. And why do we want to bend the hind legs? That is to shift the weight to the hind legs because the hind legs are much better suited for carrying us than the front legs because the, the hind legs have a kind of spring and that can feather and, and the, the front legs are really kind of stiff yeah just poles <laughs> they, 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 they carry the, 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 the horse but they cannot feather so much not in the very end like uh, the hind legs. The hind legs have seven joints and they really uh, can bend and they really can have a spring and they really can are, are able to take weight. So that's why we do the, the straightness training uh, exercises like shouldering and quartering. The, the circle is really, okay hind leg, find the right spot find the center of gravity, 
take your inside hip forward and step under the point of mass, under the point of weight. And then the, that's the job of the circle. And don't fall on the shoulder in, don't fall out, keep the center of mass in the middle. That's the job of the circle. So it's not just a funny riding, it's, it has really something, it means something. And then the shoulder in comes in. And that exercise says, okay, hind leg, because of the circle, you can find the point of mass. Now I put weight on you. And then fitness, 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 inside hind leg. And then you can say, okay, now I put the center of mass in the direction the outside hind leg is moving. So that hind leg finds the point of mass and has to fitness. So that is really, shoulder and a quarter in are really the majestic exercises you need to know. And don't wait with those exercises until you are at some uh, competition level that you need them, because that is too late. <laughs> Start with your four years old in hand, teaching the horse where to put his hind legs and teach your uh, four years old in hand the shoulder in and a quarter in and he will benefit from it all his life and if you then mount him and teach him to carry a rider he knows that he has to find you with the hind legs instead of oh I have a rider on top I place you on my handed front leg and um, yeah then, then he will overstrain that front leg. So it's really important. Well, the next step is the renfer, and that is just a simple change, and that is putting the, the, the wall to the other side. So the more difficult thing of this exercise is that the horse is not able to lean against the wall. And especially if you look at the right banded horse, a right banded horse from nature has a kind of quarter in uh, movement. So if you do a right banded horse in the travers, he easily could go back to his old natural asymmetry. And then it's better to teach the horse the renfer because when he falls on the left shoulder and there is a wall, you don't notice it. But if there isn't a wall, he will drift away from the wall. And then you can really recognize Hmm, is his point of, point of mass really under the rider and is, doesn't it drift to one of the shoulders? So that is the renfer. Just make it a little bit more um, independent from the wall, just as a check. Okay, is he really carrying himself and the rider with the uh, uh, hind legs? And the next step is the half pass. And that is nothing more and nothing less than a kind of, uh, yeah, you can, you can put, put it like this. It is a shoulder in uh, kind of forward, sidewards, and, or you can see it like a quarter in along the diagonal. Um, so that is what the half pass is. And the, the, then that is uh, more difficult because then you have no wall at all. So then he really has to be on his own legs and in between the aids of the rider and he, isn't, he doesn't have support of the wall. So half pass, it is a totally different word than haunches in, but it is actually a haunches in along an imaginary wall across the diagonal. And uh, so you see that the haunches in is uh, a, a really a cornerstone from, for the dressage, but also the shoulder in, because you could also see this as a shoulder in, not only forward, but all, also a little bit sidewards. So the shoulder in and the quarter in, all other exercises in the dressage and in straightness training are uh, related to shoulder in and quarter in. If you put a quarter in on a small circle, you will end up in a pirouette and you can do that in the walk and of course you can do it in a collected trot or in, in a collected canter and you can do it in hand or, or in riding but uh, you have to know that 
I, sh I show you the pictures also from the canter, but the, the picture on the left is just in walk. So we teach the horse um, the pirouette first in walk and it's nothing more, nothing le less than just a quarter in on a circle and you make the circle smaller and smaller and smaller and then you, you, have, uh, you have the pirouette. Well, and this is the, uh, the build up in the straightest training. So, circle, proper lateral bending, forward down, stepping under. Inside hind leg knows what to do. Shoulder in, inside hind leg takes some weight. Then the haunches in comes. Outside hind leg takes some weight. Then the ranfer. Okay, less support from the wall. Then the half pass. Okay, haunches in with no wall at all or shouldering forward, sidewards with no wall at all. So, a little bit more um, advanced kind of haunches in and shouldering. And then the pirouette uh, in walk can say to the horse, make the circle smaller and then the hind legs make a much smaller circle than the front legs and that's why they need to bend more. So that's the funny thing that the, the, the pirouette is a kind of collection for the hind legs and that the, the front legs will get more free. So that is, uh, that is um, yeah, the order to do. And I would recommend every horse just begin, uh, start in walk, just start in hand and teach the horse circle, shouldering, quartering, ranfer half pass and the pirouette just in walk and we can do it a little bit in hand what the advantage is from in hand work is that you can see what is the horse doing where is he placing the hind legs because if you sit on the horse yeah we all everybody is looking at the front <laughs> is he in a nice curl is he on the bit that's what we think is important but it's not important at all because it has all everything to do with hind legs so you should better be turned around <laughs> and look what is he doing in behind and that is something you can't see from above so the advantage from the, from the work in hand is from the ground what is he doing with the inside hind leg what does does he do with the left hind leg and the right hind leg and how is his bend so that is really interesting to study uh, all that from the ground then uh, alexandra has a question um, how do I start working hand in trot? And um, Marie has a related question. How do I start with the half steps? And um, that is one way that you can think, okay, I have done the work in hand, all these side movements, the horse can do it. Then you can think, okay, then I will teach the horse everything in trot. Or you can say, oh, I, now I can, I will teach the horse this the same with the the weight of the rider. So how we how we teach horses to do half pass pirouette, um, uh, especially shouldering and quartering, is that somebody from the ground will help, because the horse knows what to do without weight. Then we teach him what to do with the weight, and then the rider is taking over the aids from above. If the horse understands a little bit, then the helper from the ground can back up off and then the horse can do all side movements uh, with the aids from the rider. But the second thing is, okay, how do we teach a horse to do work in hand in trot and half steps? And if you collect a, a trot even more, then you will end up in, in the in the Piaf and we all always think that Piaf is something for Grand Prix horses not for us <laughs> not for my Icelandic pony not for my Haflinger pony but it is very good to teach your uh, Haflinger that is great in pushing that he is able to carry you better with the hind leg so then you don't think Hmm, I use my horse for the Piaf because it's a fancy exercise, but then you start switching it around. 
you reverse it, you think, hmm, I can use not my horse for the piaf, but I can use the piaf for my horse because I want to supple the hind legs. And that's a totally uh, switch. And because if a, if a human can make that switch, then he can teach his horse shouldering, quartering, raw fair, uh, uh, half pass, pirouette, half steps, piaf. With his Icelandic, with his Norwegian horse, with his Tinker horse, whatever. Uh, piaf is not only for uh, warm blood horses in dressage competitions. No, it is, uh, Piaf is uh, very good for horses that are way too much on the front legs. So uh, that, they, that they are able, by doing the side movements, by, uh, that they are able to collect more uh, and take the weight more on the hind quarters. So, um, uh, how do we teach the horse half steps or trot? Because it's very funny, a lot of people are able to do the work in hand in, in, uh, in the walk and then they start trotting and then the old pushing hind legs come and then they are, oh, <laughs> everything goes so fast um, because then he starts to push again the horse. It's, it's a good idea to think about, okay, what is a normal trot? So that's the, 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 the movement below and what is a piaf? That is the, the curves in the top and in between are not the normal steps or the piaf steps but the half steps so they are half as big as uh, the normal trot and it's a good idea to teach a horse um, half steps and you can set it up by uh, doing a walk in kind of collection and that you ask the inside hind leg to be a little bit faster because in the walk a horse is in a four beat and in the trot the horse is in a two beat and the two beat is that the inside hind leg is in the same uh, moment in the air as the outside front leg and you can teach a horse in walk to be a little bit faster with the inside hind leg and that is what we call uh, the diagonalization in the walk that we say to the inside hind leg, hey, come a little bit further in the air forward, not pushing backwards, but lift your inside hind leg in the same moment that the outside front leg is going up. And then you can, if the horse is able to do that, then you can say, okay, let's, let's do a little bit more trot energy. And then a lot of horses will give you the uh, half steps. And if you are able to bend the hind quarters, and here we can see the seven joints in the hind legs um, with stiff hind legs or with um, bended haunches and bended hocks. Um, you see the difference. And it, it takes some time to, to make these powerful hind legs more bendable. It really takes some time, so don't think it's a quick fix. Um, it takes some four to eight years to, to really uh, make your horse very uh, strong and that he is able to do it a long time. And what is the Piaf doing? That is shifting the weight more backwards. Why, that's why the, the hind legs will bend more and the hind legs will do that uh, left, right, left, right, left, right. So you, you will bend both hind legs um, almost, uh, yeah, one, uh, uh, then, one then, then, then the left, then the right, then the left, then the right. And for example, in shouldering, it's only the inside hind leg. But in this, this is the sixth key of straightness training, both hind legs um, uh, doing this. Uh, be before you start the, the Piaf, what the old masters did uh, was using uh, a touch Stone, so they called it. Uh, Steinbrecht, he's from the 19th century, and then we have uh, Gurinier um, from the Baroque time, and these two were really good, great grandmasters, great, fantastic schoolmasters, uh, riding masters, old, old riding masters, and um, they um, 
introduced the so-called school hold. And there's a question from uh, Christina and she says what is a school hold and why should it be trained and what is the purpose and when sh should it be used and when should it be introduced. Well, the introduction is a kind of touchstone. Is my horse ready for Piaf uh, or not? And what are the aids on the ground? And uh, now she has a lot of questions about school halt. And also Beverly has a question. I want to know about halting. How do I do this? Well, the, uh, the school, school halt is really a, a, a halt in carriage. And uh, a, a, also a good halt should be a halt in carriage. And uh, the horse should not stop like uh, blocking on the front legs and then falling out with the hindquarters. That is not a good way of halting because that is very frustrating for the front legs. So a horse really has to make a halt in a, a self-carriage, in a, in a, in a, uh, a collected way uh, of moving. And uh, a good school horse will prove the increased possibility of the bending of the hind legs. So um, it is kind of that the school horse, the horse is ready, if, if the horse is ready for the upper levels. And the upper levels, I mean Piaf, Passage, Levade, things like that. So what did, what did the old schoolmasters do? They did all side movements in walk, all side movements in trot, and then uh, they did um, uh, uh, from the trot, in one single beat they made a halt. And then in the halt, the horse has to bend the haunches and not blocking on the shoulders. And when a horse could from a trot make a halt, remaining this posture without after one second step out with one hind leg or falling on the shoulder, but the longer he could remain the, that he was square on four legs with bended haunches forward upwards uh, and he could stand like that, the more perfect the school hold was. So that is um, uh, the way the old grandmasters used uh, the school hold, that it was um, a touchstone that is, is the horse able to make from an, a good way of moving in the walk to make a halt. Well, that's not so difficult, but uh, especially the transition because the school hold, you, can't make, you cannot make a school hold from nothing. You have to make the school hold from the trot because that is the touchstone. So you have the trot and halt with one beat in between was allowed. Uh, so uh, trot, 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 one walk and stop in collection. That was uh, what the, the school hold back then uh, was. And um, when can you introduce this kind of school hold, this touchstone? That is when the first signs of lightness comes up in the trot. So you do the side movements in the trot, so you do shoulder in and the quarter in, and then the, uh, the ranfer and the half pass, and you do a little bit uh, quartering on the circle and then you feel that the horse starts to get light in the front, that he bends his haunches and then you feel, ah, oh, it's going quite nice, well, let's make a transition to halt. And then when he carries himself in that transition and keep a nice collected posture, then, then the grandmasters thought, hmm, the, the haunches are are increasingly uh, uh, bendable and then they thought mm, now my horse is, is ready to to something else. So um, it is really a, a kind of touchstone and um, a touchstone uh, how much uh, is the horse able to carry himself in, uh, in the transition and after the transition uh, will he stay in a good uh, carriage with uh, bended haunches. And uh, the, the longer he could stand in the moment, in the posture, the more perfect the, uh, this uh, school hold was. But the school hold is very, can be very 
are harmful for uh, horses that are too young or that are um, stiff in the, in the loins or that have weaknesses in, in the back and that are stiff in the hind legs, then it's, um, you have to be careful. So that's why you can only do this when you feel a sense of lightness in the trot. Because the lightness in the trot uh, on the front that you don't have him hanging in, on the reins is coming from the hind legs. So that is the, uh, yeah, that, that you, have, you really have to be careful that um, you have to halt with care um, and you have to not force him <laughs> in the halt or that you uh, press him from behind but he has to offer you the school halt just make that's why it was a touchstone it was for the old grandmasters it was not really uh, an exercise by itself it was just, okay, we do side movement in trot, we sense a kind of lightness, okay, let's make a transition from trot to halt, let's see what happened. And just, uh, that was the, the touchstone, uh, that was the purpose of, of the school halt. And um, uh, it, ha it has a, 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 lot, a lot to do with a proper transition, also from the canter, so nice collected canter, and, and then a horse is allowed to do two beats in between the canter and the halt, but then stand in the, the self-carriage uh, position. And sometimes the, the weight was uh, so much back that it could be that a horse was lifting one leg because he was really sitting on the hind legs. But that was not um, the goal or something. That was just happening because if the more shift, the more the weight shift is going backwards, the more the hind legs are able to bend, uh, yeah, the more he is starting to sit in behind, eventually we'll, you will also get a levat. Uh, that is 100% a weight shift to the hind legs. So that's a little bit about uh, the school hold. And from this perspective, it is also very normal that a horse will not stand a square and fall on the front and go like this with the hind legs. If you are not able to do the trot side movements to the left and to the right, so shouldering, haunches in, round fair, half pass in the pirouette, uh, because he will not be square if he is not evenly bendable in the hind legs. So then don't fix it in the halt. Don't think you have to do something that the halt is an exercise, it's a touchstone. And if you see there is some uh, crookedness because the, some hind legs is going, that, uh, that, that he's not doing like this, but one is more forward and one is more backwards, then you know, hmm, I have some straightness training to do. <laughs> as simple as that. So um, be careful also to, to not do a look-alike, that you think, Okay, I set my horse still and then tap, tap, tap on behind, lift, lift, lift from the front, put the hind legs and the front legs a little bit more smaller because then you will end up with a kind of mountain goat. You, you see a, a goat on the mountain uh, with the front and the hind legs close to each other, but he's not really doing a piaf or, or bending the haunches uh, or, or making a good school hold. He's just uh, like a mountain goat uh, on, a, on a small spot. So be careful not to do that and be careful to do not a kind of look like school hold uh, that there was no transition from the trot or from half steps or from piaf or from the canter that you just think ah oh, let's do school hold come in in a normal walk make a halt and then do something. That is not what the school hold is about. It is the transition from the trot, piaf or, or um, from the canter that would that makes it a good uh, 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 a good school halt. Well, and another thing is uh, when you do it in hand, then uh, don't overbend him to the inside because that you you see a lot that the horse is way too much bended in the neck, and then he is throwing his belly belly along the wall, and then he's hanging against the wall, and then it's a kind of vertical. 
uh, not straight school hold so therefore you have to be very uh, careful with that too but that's some kind of details um, but uh, remember that the school hold is in between uh, lightness uh, in the uh, side movements in trot that you check hmm can I make a school hold in perfect balance uh, in perfect carriage aha the hind legs are even bended and you can keep the posture and then the old grand grandmaster thought hmm now he's ready to do higher level performances with Piaf Passage etc so that is uh, a little bit the question about the uh, uh, school hold and the whole thing and then uh, Rose Lynn she asks uh, how to begin training with the Piaf well as you have seen by now uh, how to begin? You begin on the circle. <laughs> then you do the shouldering for the inside hind leg, haunches in for the outside hind leg, half a half past to get rid of the wall, um, the pirouette to make a, a, the haunches in on the circle and make the hind legs more bendable. Then you start to teach in walk that you have a, a faster hind leg by diagonalization the inside hind leg with the outside front leg in the walk. You put some energy, then you have some half steps. And then it's a matter of time, weeks, months, years to um, have the horse more bendable in the hind leg that he can do a kind of trot on the place with, uh, the best is with one hoof print forward. That is a nice piaf, so that is a collected trot on the place but the forward stepping of hind legs because in the competition dressage it is a good, uh, they, they really like it on the spot but what the, when you do it on the spot there is a uh, big uh, pitfall that he will block on the uh, front legs and that you Sometimes you see a rider doing piaf and he can't go out anymore. So he cannot go forward or he goes forward, piaf, 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 a little bit like <laughs> that he throws himself out. So then you know it's a, it's a piaf uh, on the front legs. And uh, so it's better to have one footprint forward that he is able to, that it is a, a, a forward uh, stepping. Uh, yeah, it is. Steinberg says um, ride your horse forward and set it straight. So the forward stepping hind legs you always need. Uh, that he's not uh, stepping under the uh, point of, uh, of yeah, that, that he doesn't uh, block on the on the front legs. Okay, so that's uh, Rosalind. Now you know what to do. <laughs> And Sarah, she has a question, how to maintain heat in a horse without tension? And um, sometimes we really have slow horses, but slow horses often, often have stiff hind legs. And because the hind legs are so stiff, uh, then it's, and the body is stiff, then, then they are not so fast and sometimes they also stiff in the head. <laughs> that they are kind of a little bit stubborn and um, then the body is stiff and the hind legs are stiff and the mind is stiff and my opinion is that stiff hind legs don't work the horse forward but make the hind legs more bendable because if you uh, see the, the joints and it's like a harmonica that it kind of spring um, that goes the angles go smaller. Uh, if you release that spring, then it's a kind of um, yeah, an arrow in an arc. And when you let go, then the, the arrow goes fast. And that is what you will notice with uh, slow horses that are, are... I really had a horse, it was so slow, you couldn't make him go forward. So I taught him everything in hand from the ground to make his hind legs more bendable and then I started riding and then he thought oh the weight I cannot do something with it so just put put weight on top and and I did the, the work in hand the same until he was used to the weight and the extra weight of the rider I could also add to the hind legs so they 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 had to carry more so it was heavier fitness training 
And then I could do uh, the riding in walk and in trot and on the side movements. And then I noticed that the, uh, when I did the circle he was uh, in the beginning slow also with the riding. And then I did some shoulder in and then he, he, he went even more slow. But after the shoulder in I did a, a circle again and then he was like the arrow in the bow and and there he goes on the circle. <laughs> much faster. So that is a kind of idea. The stiff hind legs make them more bendable like a spring. That it is a kind of arrow in an arc and then uh, when you uh, take off the weight then, then he, phew, he starts to move and then you, you will have more heat uh, because um, uh, that kind of energy comes from behind so really the, the, the motor, the, the power really comes from behind and that energy it, he will transfer over the spine uh, to the shoulders and phew, there he goes. So uh, uh, heat have to come from behind but can't come uh, from stiff legs. So that's a little bit the, the question of the answer to that question. Then there's a question about how do you develop the collected canter and the collected canter in hand? And there is also a question, another question about the canter. Uh, I have a thoroughbred mare and she struggles with the canter. She can manage a stiff hollow canter on the right rein, but it's virtually, virtually impossible to canter her on the left rein. She tends to fall into the right and drift out to the left. So that is typical. Um, the natural symmetry that you will uh, see uh, in this canter. So what the old grandmasters said that if a horse is natural talent, some horses really have natural ta talent for canter, then you can do very much in the beginning uh, walk, trot and canter on the launch then you have no problem and everything is fine. But for example, my maestro, he was so crooked and he was so right bended and so left handed and so pushing with the right hind legs. Well, it was a matter of life and death if you did a canter with that horse almost. So it was really when he go get off in the canter, he felt on that left shoulder and whoa, <laughs> especially if we were if we were, were going to the left pff, it was really uh, horrible it was so difficult for him it was impossible really and uh, and then i read about it about this phenomenon uh, in steinbrecht's book gymnasium of the horse and also gurnier uh, was talking about it in uh, in his book and they said well canter wait with the canter until he can bend the haunches. And when does a horse can bend the haunches? If he can do all side movements and then collection in trot that he shows some lightness and more, even better, show some uh, half steps and even more better show some piaf. And then he really can take weight uh, on the hind legs. And then when he is able to bend the hind legs, he is able to do uh, a collected canter because in the canter if he can bend the hind legs he can canter uphill um, and uh, so that was uh, their tip so um, my horse Meister was only able to canter normally uh, first when I taught him the levade so when he really could bend the haunches um, then he was able to do the canter pirouette. And here I, I can show you that you can see that both hind legs really have to bend because they have to take the front, uh, they need to carry the front and the head. So the haunches really ha have to bend uh, to be able to do a proper canter pirouette. And um, especially if you, if you have problems with the canter, it is because he has one pushing leg and he has one carrying leg and then when he takes off <laughs> in the canter he really pushes the point of mass to one of the shoulders 
and then you have a problem. So sometimes um, it is uh, when you start to canter, he's like a, a ticking time bomb, and then then people say, ah, he's doing it on purpose. He want he doesn't he wants to get you off. Um, he uh, he's disobedient. He's dominant. And the horse is only thinking, oh, how do I survive this because I'm falling? <laughs> so uh, be careful to, to really uh, be able to read the horse. Is this a mind question or is this an imbalance question from the body? And that is uh, that's the study we, we have to make. Um, so that's uh, the advice in canter. If you really have big problems in canter, just do the side movements in walk and trot, collect the trot, feel the lightness in trot, use the touchstone by making a school hold. Is he able to do a, a proper school hold? Okay, then we can do some more half steps, build it up to more piaf. From the collected trot or collected walk, uh, make a, a jump into the canter, upwards, uphill. And so it is all, everything um, you build it up, logical, then it can't go wrong because it's very easy. If, if something is not working in the canter, you have to fix it in the trot. If it's not working in the trot, fix it in the, in the walk. And uh, if you cannot fix it in the pirouette, go back to the former exercise, that is the half pass. Is it not working the half pass? Go back to the renvers. Does it not work in the renvers? Go back to the hondjes in. Haunches in problems, go back to the shoulder in. Shoulder in problems, go back to the circle. Shoulder in, uh, circle okay, go back to the shoulder in. Shoulder in okay, quarter in. Quarter in okay, around there. Half pass, pirouette, everything in the walk okay. Everything in trot okay. And then everything in the walk okay. That's a little bit how simple <laughs> it is. Um, and then, I have a, we have a question from Eloy Fierro and he says, how can I do start the Levade with my horse? Well, now we are here in this uh, webinar. We now know, all of you and me, that we ha just have to do the steps I told you before and then you end up in uh, the Piaf, more weight to the hind legs and the more the hind legs can take weight the stronger he gets and that takes some years then he is finally able to put all the weight on the hind legs and then he will lift the front legs and then you will have a levade and that has nothing to do with a trick uh, like he is rearing or uh, that you lift the front uh, no he has to sit down in behind and when he sits, starts to sit, it's like he sits, sit, 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 and then for a, uh, by coincidence he will lift one leg and then he will lift two legs. So it's a little bit coincidence. It's not, hello, you have to come up on the front. It has nothing to do with that. It is sit, 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 bend, 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 and then he loses a kind of his uh, balance, but then the other way around. He's not falling on the front legs, but he's falling on the hind legs too much and then there's some point that he oh, <laughs> and then he lifts his front and that's the proper way of teaching the levade it has nothing to do that you have uh, to lift the front because then you will end up uh, with a passade a passade is that he throws himself up and the levade is that he sits down and the rearing is, is, is completely with stiff hind legs, so that has nothing to do with the levade. Uh, but it is the sitting down uh, from behind. There are some questions about uh, should I do this with uh, this whole straight this training thing with a bit or without a bit or a snaffle or, or a curb or, or can I do it bitless or whatever. And from, it's not really uh, depending on the tools, it's much more dependent. It much more depends on your way of thinking. What do you want? You want an LFS. You want an inside hip forward. You want an inside hind leg forward, and you really don't think in tools. 
uh, but think in quality what you want to have in the body and what you want to have in uh, the, the hind legs and if you have lots of quality without a bit that's fine by me um, but if he has the tendency to shorten the neck too much in the collection well then perhaps use a curb because that lengthens the neck um, and if you really want to place the skull uh, as a first piece of the spine and you do it with a normal halter or a rope halter and you, you feel he's, he's twisting too much uh, then you, perhaps it's better to use a cover zone because then you can place the nose exactly where you want and keep the ears uh, not uh, unequal but equal. Uh, so I don't think you have to put it like this, so you have to do, use this and you have to do that. It's also good to experiment a little bit and then know uh, what gives you the best quality. And from my experience I can tell and that's why I also sell it on our website, I use the cover saw because then I can place the point of the nose, the skull, I can place it exactly on the spine, not uh, crooked, the ears like this, exactly like this, like this, and then I can uh, produce a good uh, lateral bend and, um, and that's the way you, how you need to think. You can use whatever you want and every method has its fashion items. And every method has its fancy saddles and fancy equipment and stars and stripes. Uh, but uh, it is all about the quality. And what do you want? A proper LFS, an inside hip forward, an inside hind leg under the point of mass. And that's all that counts. You, will, you want to move the weight to the hind legs. You want to free the shoulders. You want to have a long neck. And uh, you have, uh, that's what you want to produce. And, doesn't matter how you do it, <laughs> but uh, you have you you need to know what you want. So there, now we are back on where we started uh, the the webinar from the beginning. What is your goal? What do you want? And if you like this kind of straightest training, that you think hmm that's interesting, uh, yeah, then you can study and think a little bit from okay what what tools shall I use? And then you could choose for a cavasol or you could choose for something else, but. But something else, but what do you want? What quality do you want? What do you need? Do you want LFS, bending inside hind leg, bending outside hind leg? Yeah, then you have to, to use some tools uh, to, to, to be able to ask from the horse uh, to do that. And if, if, if you have such a good relationship with your horse that he understands only by thinking what you want. A lot of riders who start to think on the canter, then the horse starts to canter. And the riders th think, oh, what is happening here? I didn't ask it. No, but you thought it. And then there's some muscle memory that the horse responds to the muscle memory and the, the energy memory. And then you think, oh, okay, I know this. <laughs> we will start to canter. Uh, and then even you can, you can get rid of everything. You can, you can even do straightness uh, training with nothing, just at liberty. Um, and that is uh, uh, perhaps a little bit a test too, like the school hold is a touchstone. Uh, also doing uh, straightness training in liberty. Okay, how much uh, res uh, responds my horse to uh, my energy, my body language and uh, is he not only that I'm making him to do the piaf, but does he want to do it by himself? And is he, uh, is he willing to do all the straightness training exercises? Not because I like it and not because I want it, but, but because he likes uh, to work with me and that he thinks, well, okay, let's do this. So that's uh, uh, the, the, the stripping all the tools is just uh, also a check and a touchstone from, hmm, um, am, I, am I not bullying the horse, but uh, uh, is there a kind of dialogue between us and uh, does he want to do it and is he not just obeying me because he is scared or something uh, like that. So um, that's a little bit about the, uh, the tools and there's much more to talk about tools but that takes too much uh, time, then we can uh, do uh, two, uh, two hours more. <laughs>